guys who don't know me, my name is Brian Hayes. I've, I've actually met about 40 folks that worth the people so far over the past three days, including and helping folks get ready for the event. So I'm glad you guys are here. Um, Thank you, Brian. I asked, I asked a few folks to help me out. Uh, if you don't know Tom Allen, and we go sailing today, you'll know him by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> Tom uh, obviously builds the boats for uh, the current boats and fixes everything for you guys. So uh, I wanted to get him here to get some of his thoughts on sailing the breeze and, and a little bit of trim stuff. Todd Wake, uh, Todd's wife is a North American champion, and she brought Todd along once to sail with her and win the North Americans as well. And I uh, asked uh, Sarah Paisley, who's around somewhere. Oh, there she is. So Sarah's uh, sailing with Josh Goldman this week, but she sailed with Greg Fisher and Mike Gingham and a whole bunch of people who are way better than me. So, uh, but the idea was to kind of get some of Sarah's thoughts on uh, throwing up in the bow of the boat and some sail trim stuff and work a little bit with Tom uh, on some tuning stuff for you guys. And Todd and I maybe touch base on some sail trim stuff and, and, and answer some of your questions. So. Um, first thing I wanted to do, maybe is to spend some time talking with Tommy. Uh, how many of you people have had help tuning your boat this week? Okay. Um, one of the things that we spend a lot of time doing is walking around the parking lot, making sure everybody's bass are straight. You probably, if you've been in the parking lot for the past two or three days, you've seen Tommy jumping up and down on a few masts trying to make them straight. So, you know, one of the things, especially when we're a little bit off the, uh, you know, where a lot of stuff is readily available, What's sometimes you've got to kind of work through things to get things kind of raceable and, and in good condition. So, Tom, you want to talk a little bit about the importance of how the boat and the okay. why, why we spend so much time trying to make sure it's straight and some of the tuning stuff? into it if you don't have a straight mast. So we spend a fair bit of time working on that and it's also hard to get the tune correct if you don't have a straight mast. Now there's two different directions we look at the straightness. The one that everybody looks at is sighting along the track and seeing whether it's falling off right or left. The other one is the fore and aft bend and both of those have to be correct. When you're sailing, you're doing almost all your tuning has to do with the fore and aft bend. You're changing the rig this way. The shroud tensions and when we set it up, that almost all has to do with the fore and aft or the side to side, making it straight. You want to have it straight. You're know, looking up from here, your main halyard to see what's straight. And then you want to have the bend correct. So one of the things that I always try and get people to do is always look at your mask before you put it up. Many times we've put masks up and you're trying to tune it and you're trying to, ah, oh, it's not quite straight. Well, if it's not straight and you put it in the boat, it's really hard to make it straight with the shrouds. So to make it look straight, what I've been doing is I use the main halyard and I put a little piece of string on the end of it or a rope. And so when you're looking and you pull it tight, you can look from the tip of the mast all the way through the butt of the mast and make sure it's straight. Keep banging and stuff like that when the breeze comes on. And what are you kind of looking for when you're talking about balance and stuff like that? Well, in any condition, I think the number one thing is the boat balance that Tom was talking about. We all agree we don't want a lot of helm. The most you want is a little bit. Some people like not much at all. Kind of depends on the on the conditions. For me, um, the wavier it is, sort of the less helm I want, so I'm able to steer the boat through the waves a little easier. You can think about how you have the balance set up. In flatter water, you know, maybe you can get a little bit more help so you can let the boat point a little bit more. Um, but speaking of trim, if we're going to talk about today where it's windy, so when it's super windy, it's, it's important to get the boat balanced. We want to have it set up and tuned for heavy air, which is what we would do today. So we block the mast back and put turns on the lowers you know, to the tuning guy. Okay. And this is for the M5. For the M5. Talking about. For the Fisher, you should be set. And then, and then what you need to do is you need to go sailing and see how it feels. Especially a big wind like this, I'm thinking about the gross tune in the sails. If we pull both sails in 
and we're and the boat has a ton of weather helm, it probably means well one of three things. We're healing too much, the main's in too tight or the jib's too loose. Because think about it, pulling the main tight is gonna head you up into the wind and the jib is gonna tend to push you away from the wind, right? So you wanna have the the boat in a balance and have the sails move together. Uh, when there's a big puff, people want to just dump the main off. Well, if it's really windy, what's going to happen is with your jib still in, the boat's you're going to let the main out. You're gonna, the boat's going to heel over, still heel over, and want to bear off and be pushed down by the jib. So it's really important to move both sails at once if it's really windy. Just a little. See how uh, Steve's boat here has ratchets on the jib and a two-to-one on the jib sheet. That allows you, the forward crew, zero, to be able to just ease an inch of jib sheet. That might be all it takes. We're not talking about big movements. We're just a little bit. It's a high aspect. It's a high aspect sail. So when you ease the sheet a little, the leech moves a long way. Does that make sense? I'm gonna jump in and just yeah. add one more thing on the main jib combination. Most of the time, people have some bang on. But in heavy air, and you let your mane out a little bit, everybody goes, oh, you know, I get a big puff, I let the mane out. One of the things that happens is, as the mane, the leaf of the mane is taking a lot of the force and transferring it to the core stay. If you let the mane sail out, all of a sudden the head stay gets soft, it goes forward, and the jib is always a reference between the front of the sail and the back. So if you have the back pleated, and you let the front forward, you're essentially trimming the sail. And so, a lot of times when people just ease the main, they're actually easing the main, closing the slot, and pulling the jib in if you don't do both at the same time. So it's really important to either have fair enough bang on so that the main still holds the four stay tight, or you gotta ease the jib, or both so that you can both ease the sails. We'll get into the twist in a minute, but that's the base setup is the twist. And then being able to play them in the big puff, that's what you're talking about. So I, ideally in a big wind like this, I would have the bang on going up wind. I'd have the, I'd sheet the main in hard, about as hard as I'm gonna sheet it. And I'd pull the bang snug at that point, not, not pulling hard all the slack out. So then when I, if I ease the main off a little bit, then the vein thing's taking the strain. And so this, the way I, I do it, everybody's, everybody's a little, a little different. different. Yeah. But, but I want to be set up going up then. If it's this windy, I'm not going to be dumping the traveler all the way. The traveler, traveler maybe it's going to be down, down to here, okay? The bank's going to be on hard, the back stays going to be on. And I want to, Getting it balanced and then doing the little things. Puff hits, you feather up a little, you better grab the main sheet ease a couple inches, you get the boat back on its feet and going again. I feel high and then maybe you can get that main sheet back in to where it was as you as you settle in. So do you have any questions right away? That's why when I was younger I wanted it all straight off the back end. Of course. When you get that big puff and you go up on your ear, it's really slow. It's not just slow because you think you're, you're actually 
you sail and look from behind, if you're in a power boat like Brian's saying, if somebody gets that big heel, they, they actually go sideways. And it's a lot more than you think. It's not a little bit. It could be a full half a boat length or a boat length before they get their boat back under control. And it, they just keep sliding down. So if you, you, you have the leech tight and you can't keep it straight, then you're losing every time you get a big puff and you heel over. So I started twisting, and the twisting is you can twist it all the way, big huge twist, and you got a lump, and you have just a little piece of sail that's working correctly. And as you take the twist out, you get a bigger section of sail that's working, and you find that happy medium of how much sail is working and how much you're spilling. The other thing that's very important with the twist is if I twist it, I need to have enough drive in the sail. That's why I don't have as much backstay on. Because if I twist it, I'm opening the top, but the bottom is still driving. I still have a full sail. If you use just backstay, the laser technique, the guys who use backstay and trim the main and they blade the main out. If you've got flat water, you can get away with that. If you're trying to drive, you, you've got nothing left in the sail. If you twist it, you can decide how much power you want. If it's twisted and you get a light spot, you just pull it in, you close the twist. And you get a big puff, you ease it out a little bit and the top, the top of the sail twists off. The part that's really easy to tip you over because it's pushing on the top of the mast. Do the same thing with a jib. Here, as Brian said, we talked about it before, some people set the twist in by moving the lead back a little. Some people do it by easing a little bit. Both work, they sort of different techniques. The one where you ease the sail out, you have to have a crew that can do it. Pull it in and know it and bring it back in and look at it. If you pull it on the pin and set it where you want it and you put a mark on the jib and you, you, know, you pull it in there, the crew, you, know, you don't have to think about it as much. You want to teach your crew how to think about it and look at it, but you don't always have that option. With my daughter, she wanted me to bring up, and we're going to throw it at Sarah. A lot of times, there's a difference after you tack. How fast you pull the jib in? What do you do? What do you talk about with your teammates? Because obviously, if it's blowing like this, it's going to be different than when it's blowing fine. So after you go through a tack, what are you doing with the jib? If it's flat water, the jib and the puffs coming possibly, and you feel the angle of heel. So if you, if you see the a little puff hits and you think the boat can go up a little bit, don't, don't get back on the royal and hike out all the way right away. Wait one second, right? Let the, let the boat kind of accelerate and ease up a little on itself and then as it gets to on the wind, sort of get up there and hike it slightly flatter back to your, you know, you're trying just out of the water. Right? Same thing when it gets lighter, you better get back in the boat before the chine hits the water, right? Or the boat's going to stop. And I like my little crew to do that on their own, and you should try to. And I always say, if the skipper doesn't like what you're doing, they'll say something or hit you with the tiller extension. <laughs> but the communication there almost has to be almost when you're doing it wrong, because if you have to talk every time you want your middle crew to shift their weight, it's too much. You can't, you can't do it through every cycle, at least for me anyway. So hopefully as a middle crew you're being proactive and the skipper will say, that's great, that's perfect, hike a little more next time, we're a little too flat, or they might scream an obscenity and say, don't do that, why'd you do that? But hopefully that'll be few and far in between. One more thing, my crew just told me that uh, the most important thing is going to be to just hike hard. <laughs> sure, that's what your crew said. Let me write that down. Better you can talk. Oh, yeah.